Okay guys, we're on our way into the bush to the cabin for the night. I'm going to have to come back and make another trip today. I got uh, my food box and my grub box here. Chains up there, sleeping bag, foamy, some stuff. Six half sheets of plywood. And uh, I feel like king of the castle. I'm sitting. Oh, and I got a fishing rod too on the way back. I'm going to stop at a little lake and see if there's any fish in there. But, anyways, I'm riding high. So here's the windshield. No more hiding behind the windshield on this trip for the wind. But it's a beauty day. We had a chance of frost last night, but it just it never happened, so that was good. But here we are. I mean, the leaves are turning pretty good. It's only, I don't know what it is, 9th September, 8th of September, or whatever. Hey, wait a minute. 9th or 8th or 10th. Uh, oh, no, it's actually it's Wednesday, so it's 9th. I think bird season opened up right shortly here. Cool. Get to go start shooting partridge pretty soon. I'll check the book when I get home tomorrow. See you at the cabin. Here we are, guys. We're on our way in, but I just want to show you this. Now that there is called a Red Admiral Butterfly. That's, I remember this from when I was a little kid doing butterfly collecting for school science projects. Beautiful sample. Just sunning himself, getting in the warmth. These are one of the butterflies that like to lay with their wings open like that. Usually you can tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly because butterflies will sit with their wings together. Moss will sink, sit with their wings like this. But this guy's just drying off and warming up from the cold night. It was only plus three this morning, so not even 40 degrees. Anyways, I'll get going here and scare him away before I run him over. Come well, on guys, just stop for coffee. I've just been setting up some, you know, I did put a couple pieces of plywood down on the floor and uh, clean up the side a little bit, but I just wanted to show you something that's, well, it's, it's not exactly the coolest thing I've ever seen in the world because I did watch my kids get born, but this is pretty awesome. I just hung this up. This is a, a clock temperature gauge it's got a remote for outside it tells me the temperature outside um, date temperature inside the weather um, it's just so cool it's called an atomic clock as you can see right there and uh, what's especially cool about it is it got sent to me by one of the watchers most of you guys know him by Bulldog and I said it was a cabin warming gift and that is just so cool and it's in a place of honor there thanks a lot Bulldog um, <laughs> all I can say it's awesome really it's the temperatures changing outside is it and I know all the Canadians are gonna go why is it in Fahrenheit and not in Celsius, well, especially the young guys, but a lot of you guys are old enough, like me, to remember when we were in Fahrenheit 2. And I still have to convert, anytime somebody tells me what the temperature is in Celsius, I still convert it in my head back to Fahrenheit before I uh, really figure out how cold or warm it is. So. Anyways, that is so darn cool.
appreciate it immensely, my friend. It's a wonderful present. Alrighty, I'm going to drink my coffee and I might even make a lunch. Boy, I got in here and I started doing some stuff and and I didn't even realize it wasn't until I I opened the clock and went to set it up and I went, no, that can't be right, it's 2 o'clock already. But, like I said, I think I'm, I'm, I'm possibly going to run back out today, tonight still, and get another load. Um, mainly because I don't want to leave my gas and that wood stove sitting there. So I'm probably going to do that rather in a couple hours. Because I can always leave it till tomorrow, but i got a funny feeling there's more there than I can get in one load anyway. So I'll just uh, get what I can and bring the rest in tomorrow morning. I'll just go out to the road, come back in and and be done with her. But right now I think I'm going to cut a bunch of, well, I mean as soon as I have some deed I'm going to cut a bunch of the dry firewood like that tree, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there. I'll cut them down and uh, those will be the wood, the firewood I use for this year. This uh, stuff here, most of it's too wet. I mean some of it's good stuff but a lot of it's been sitting on the ground for a year or two. And it's not uh, not what I want to burn through the winter. So, alrighty, got my sleeping bag in. Got some bird food. I'm gonna when I, when I take this tree right here down, I'm gonna make a bird feeder out of a chunk of it. I think. Alrighty. in a bit. I'm hungry. Alrighty. What we got? I decided I'm not making the trip in to get the other load until the morning. So I've, but I've got all the plywood down that I have here. Got uh, starting to sort out stuff and of course I bought plumbing stuff to drop the sink down and it's wrong size. I just eyeballed it when I was here last and apparently my eyeballs don't work very good so but anywho got a bunch of firewood cut you see a bunch here that split some up. Got a big pile here that needs to be split up over there. Got a whole bunch more over there that I cut the other day. This stuff here is all nice dry stuff. All uh, it's getting piled close to the uh, door here. It'll be stuff that burns first. I'll get uh, that there, and then I'll have a. I imagine I'll still get another row in here. And get it up about yay high here, six feet or so. And then I'll have to start hauling in some birch. But right now I'm going back about a mile back where I can uh, I can get cell service. It's almost six o'clock. Told my wife I'd phone her this evening. She worries. Let her know I'm okay. Then we'll uh, come back and have some supper pile some more firewood but on the way I am gonna go just take a walk up to that beaver dam Let's see if I can see what the house looks like and how many beavers are there alrighty we'll see over there okay here we are just upstream from the dam cabins well, down there about as far as you can see those trees And right there, you can just see see those two sticks. That's the top of the beaver house. Pretty tiny little thing. Probably just a pair of beavers in here. So I'll decide whether I want to take them out or not. 
Um, I'm leaning towards yes, just so that after I take them out, I can rip that dam out of there. So that in the spring, when we get a big thaw, that dam doesn't go out and with all the extra water, take my bridge out. So I might just kill them beavers out and drown or drain the pond. I think that's probably gonna be the plan for now. But anyways, I'll head back to the to the bike and then go up and give the wife a call. Later guys. Hey guys, we got supper rolling. Let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, so I'm taking my doctor's advice. He told me to cut back on bread and potatoes try and get rid of my belly a little bit so I thought I'd better listen to him so instead of having a french fry sandwich I'm just gonna have french fries oh with chili on it though chili's good for you so that'll be good french fries smothered in chili and a nice cup of coffee yummy Anyways, one thing I've realized, it is too dark to film in this cabin without some lights on, so I will get a couple lights going and see if I can even film in there in the after, after light is gone, so alrighty, but I don't know if you can see it, there's my french fries cooking there. There's my chili cooking right there. So Oh, she's a beautiful quiet evening. If I was on the other end of my trap line, I'd be able to hear elk bugling all night long. But over in this end we don't uh, I don't see a lot of elk here. More moose and deer than than elk. So, anywho, I'm gonna supper's almost ready, so I'll sign off for a while. Man, guys, look at those French fries. Do they look awesome or what? Now. them off. We just smother them in chili. We'll leave some chili for tomorrow. And we're good to go. See no critters run by yet, so gosh darn that's good stuff. I have, however, cut back. I only use three potatoes for french fries. I used to eat a lot more than that, but I guess as you get older. I remember one time my buddy Bill Clark came out to my trap line. That was my line on Nimagus Lake. And we sat down and ate a whole, <laughs> yeah, I know this is kind of piggish, but we ate a whole 10 pound bag of potatoes cut up in french fries in one sitting but they were so good 
and we didn't have chili on them. Anywho, so tomorrow, when we got more light, I'll do uh, the first the first segment of the good old days story time. All right. I think I'm going to finish my supper here and then pile some more for firewood. I'm not going to run the saw anymore tonight because I don't want to scare any critters that might be coming around that I might see. So, I'll wait till tomorrow to run the saw some more. Uh, one spruce there is kind of get in my way, isn't it? I'm going to have to get rid of that guy. A couple of them trees in there are dead ones for firewood. But that one spruce got them big branches blocking my bridge. So, but a few of those ones there are going to go. You see they're dead right up to the top. Alrighty, I'm going to see ya. Hey there guys, we're just uh, inside. It's 10 o'clock. Um, been doing some caulking. I did some chinking um, with the caulking gun. It works pretty good. You get the small cracks, of course, that's why I left them. But it's, uh, I used three tubes of caulking, so you're looking at, you know, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, and did. Well, let me put it this way, it, it'll be the most expensive of all the methods and you can't use it on big gaps. This is just on the, I used it on the tiny ones and uh, just made it uh, fit in there good, but it's really good for doing around these window sills where I, you can't really get any of the uh, sawdust paste in there and we've got oh and I just wanted to mention too this is my my Coleman lantern here you know it's the gas one it's not propane if you're ever out in the bush in the summertime in your camp or in a tent or anything um, now they throw a lot of heat but these things are excellent if you take the glass part off the globe Okay, that's that part up there, right behind my hand. You know, you take the handle off, the lid off, slide the the globe off of it, then put the lid back on, and leave it running all night, setting on your table there. I'm not going to do it tonight because I don't have to, it's 47 degrees outside, I don't have to worry about mosquitoes too much. Um, but if you put this, put that thing on this table here, and in the morning this table would be covered in mosquitoes and you know an inch deep my old trapping cabin I used to use that all the time and it was uh, it was not chinked all together the best in the world but uh, you know for a mosquito it doesn't take much of a a crack to let them in. So uh, they would, you know, granted though, the light shining through the cracks really attracts them too. But I'm telling you, like there was literally, the, my kitchen, my table in the cabin was covered and around the lantern it was an inch deep in dead mosquitoes. So that's just a little tip if you, uh, you know, I don't really care to have a pick burning all night and breathing that crap. And I don't want like sleeping with bug spray all over me, so I just used to use that, keep that thing going, and it would uh, kill every mosquito. They just fly into the flame, and their wings burn off, and they never even actually touch your mantle. They just the wings burn off, and they drop to the ground dead, and uh, works wonders. So, a little tip for you. Okay, guys, it is. Ten after 
Chapter 11. My light's about running out of fuel, so there's my bed roll here. Already. And I am about ready to. It's 46 degrees outside. Just finished doing the last batch of chinking for the night. The um. Boy, that thing's kind of foggy. Um, I've been in a kind of a quandary here. See, I can't buy a roof flashing anymore. For that black stove pipe, it's, uh, because it's not code for any installations on any kind of a building. I guess they don't take trappers' shacks into account, but so they don't even make it anymore up here. None of my suppliers can find it, so I've been fighting with, you know, using. Uh, I can get them for the Selkirk chimney. But I don't want that big heavy pipe in here. I've got the, the one piece just if I had to have it, but I just, uh, you know, I've got a, a plumber that might be able to make it out of the tin. Well, you know, I think I'm just going to go buy eighth inch steel plate and uh, a section of, a section of uh, inside. Heavy, heavy pipe because I might not uh, be that uh, good at soldering uh, something like that together, but I can certainly cut the steel and weld it together pretty quick. And then I'll just have, in that way, instead of having just a, you know, I think they're only 16 inches, those, or if that, the flashings, I'm going to get a piece three feet high. And then I don't have to worry about how much snow is up there on the roof. And have it leaking in. That's a, an awesome idea. I am going to get on that as soon as I get home. Then I can have the stove where I want it instead of uh, because the other, my other option was putting a hole through one of the end walls and you know with the windows where they are my only option would have been having the stove right here going through that wall and I really don't want that it's going right here straight up through the roof there and that, I think that will work fine with the, uh, the solid steel and kind of try to figure out what the angle is and I'm thinking probably well it doesn't matter I'll just cut the hole I'll put it through and I'll just leave the window down I'm not even have to cut it at an angle yeah cool Right on. That's what we'll do. Alrighty, so I am done for the evening. 11 14. It's 47 degrees outside right now. Oh, and Bulldog, that thing is, that is so cool. <laughs> I love that clock with the thermometer built in. That is awesome. Alrighty. Uh, Have a good night. Keep your boots dry. Keep your bed dry too. <laughs>
Makes me wish I was heading out to set trap this morning, but got oh a month to wait anyways. But first plans are this morning coffee, some breakfast, and I'm heading out to get that other load of plywood and my wood stove and stuff like that in here. And I'll just come back and continue cleaning up some firewood. A little bit more chinking. There's less to do every every day, so we will Oh, last night too. I mean, it was pitch black, so it was hard to There was something splashed around in the river down there. So I don't know if it was otters or, or a deer walking across or, or what. But. Anyways, we'll get at her as soon as I get some wake up juice in me here. Alrighty. Hey guys, we're back uh, where I dropped off the wood and everything. And once again, my uh, procrastination bites me in the butt. Oh, those idiot animals. I left my two five gallon gas cans here. That one's good. This one is drain dry. As you can see right there and right there. And that's just a puny little bear. God. Now there's twelve, fifteen bucks for a can and thirty bucks of fuel gone down the down the ground. At least he left my coke alone. That was just a, a treat I was going to leave in the cabin for, to have a, a coke zero every once in a while. Well, at least he left that gas can there so I can fill up the bike and have a little bit left in the camp for emergencies. What an a-hole. All those animals can be a pain. Anywho. I gotta head back to the truck. I wasn't planning on it, I was planning only to come this far. But my battery died on my phone last night. Cause I forgot to shut it off again, of course. And so I'm gonna run to the truck, charge, plug it in and phone the wife cause I promised her I'd phone her this morning. And if I don't, you know, she'll be worried. So I'll be back in a bit. Hey guys, we're on our way back in. Um, you see, I got the bike loaded up pretty good. I think I'm gonna get much more on there. So that's uh, all we have left there. Six boards, six 12 foot two by fours, three sheets of plywood, so. Anyways, now if I can get my fat butt into here. We'll be good to go. All right, we'll move on down the trail. That away. Hey guys, we're just about ready to head out. I got a couple of places to stop on the way out, so I'm leaving the cabin kind of early. But here is uh, somebody had asked about these airtight heaters. See, that is actually what they're called, airtight heater, made by. Great West Metal Limited out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I mean, I bought these things all over in Ontario, wherever I was. I had no idea they came from Winnipeg. But almost every home hardware store I've ever been in stocks them. They come in multiple sizes. The one I have in the cabin is a 19 inch. This is a 22 inch. You see that there? They have, a, I believe, a 24 and a 26. And then I think they go down as low as maybe 16. Not really sure on that, but uh, they do get pretty small, which is a size for a 
you know, a tent camp or, or fish shack or something like that. But anyways, these are them. They're also called swing top stoves. Quite light. Here's why they call them swing tops. They come with a set of legs. See, I prefer, I'm going to be bringing a ring of bricks to set them on the, to set the stove on top of the bricks instead of using the legs. The legs are, you know, a little bit flimsy. Um, you know, but I've never had one collapse on me, but I just like putting them on a right solid on some bricks. And then there's always your option is to put a, an inch of dry sand in the bottom also. That'll stop heat transference from the through the bottom of the stove it towards your floor. So, but anywho, that's that. And uh, like I said swing top airtight heater. Alrighty. And uh, I can't remember who it was that messaged me asking me about that, but I will when I get back to the computer. I will post him a message to, to let him know in case he doesn't see the video. Alrighty, later. I'm on my way out.